let me look at m s n n p m in series first and then n in parallel. As I told you this configuration is not preferred configuration. This is what it shows you first put 14 or what m cells in series you put another m cell in series and this you call it a string each one of them is a string and then you put multiple strings in parallel huh? and that gives you the n uh, strings in parallel it will give you m s n p. 14 cells if you connect it in series it will give you 48 volt. So, it becomes 48 volt if you put 20 cells in series it will give you close to 72 volts. So, that is how the battery packs are designed. Of course, as I told you, this is not the best way. We will come to that in a few minutes. 100 cells in series will give you 365 volt, 200 cells in series will give you 735 mm, 730 volt battery. Strings can be connected in parallel to increase capacity. So, if I use 14 S into 2 P or 15 S cell, I get 48 volt because 14 series means 48 volt into 2 in parallel each is 15 a 14 h 15 h capacity. So, I get you multiply this 96 into 15 ampere hour is 1.5 kilowatt hour capacity any capacity can be built any voltage any current can be built using something like that, but there is a concern. I put 14 of them in series. Let us say cells at slightly different voltage at any time, at any time during charging or discharge. G. Suppose the voltage of this together works out to be at any time 50, sorry, 51 volt, and for this it works to 49.5 volt. What will happen? String voltage of the two strings are different and you connect them in parallel. Immediately a current will start flowing like this, but the voltage has to be same. This is internal current not external. This is called balancing. And every time you charge or discharge the voltages of number of cells in series will not be same. So, a lot of balancing will be required a lot of these balancing actually hurts you are actually discharging and charging the cells the cell life goes life goes, uh, goes down back life goes down unless cells are exactly the same voltage even if you take the cells at the time of manufacturing measure if they are exactly the same after some usage as SOH becomes from 100 percent to 99 percent the voltage will not remain same and the current will keep on flowing from one string to another this will happen continuously while charging and discharging even when idle you will keep on trying to balance and not good for battery. So, this mechanism M S n p is not used. What is used is something like this you first create a module this is a module put n series cells in parallel and then you connect them. So, this is a module this is a module first you connect the module and then you put module into series. If you put 4 cells in parallel of 15 a h you get 60 a h, 8 will give you 120 a h, uh, 16 will give you 240 h. So, you get a module of different a h. Now, you connect them in series, series to make battery of higher voltage. If you put 14 modules of 60 a h, you will get 4 p 14 s 51 volt 60 ampere hour capacity is 3.06. If we connect 14 modules of 120 ampere hour, huh, 
in series, you will get 8 p 14 s or 6.12 kilowatt. This is the way n p m s and this is the only way the right way of designing it. No major balancing issue. Of course, you can say here the within a module there may be balancing, what if the cells are of not same voltage. Well, this is the reason the cells in parallel has to be carefully chosen, they are exactly similar kind. Hmm? And while charging discharging, you have to make sure that different current does not flow through. That is the reason you actually connect them like this. Huh? You have to make sure that the resistance is not difference. Now, if the resistance is different, you know different current will flow. So, do not worry about. If internal resistance is different, you apply the same voltage, different current will flow. So, you have to worry about each and every of this. There is a self balancing hmm, and at time you can enable some more balancing which is ok, otherwise you will end up in trouble. So, basically cells to module and module to pack. So, multiple cells packed in parallel to form a module, cells selected so that they are same voltage balanced, cells connected with a metal bar that conducts electricity. So, they are cells are put on a metal bar. Hmm, so, that there is enough, it does not give too much of resistance, it is conducts very easily. Multiple modules is put into a series to form a pack and then there is a battery management system which will monitor the voltage of every module, the current of every module and temperature of every module. And for lithium ion batteries, it will then try to work to get optimal performance. During charging, if unequal current flows between multiple batteries, you will try to do what is called equalization. It monitors voltages and temperature of each module. Hmm? If a module is not getting sufficiently charged, you bypass another module or you let more current flow into that module. If temperature of any module is going up, <coughs> slow down, do not let it charge. <coughs> if a module is overcharged as opposed to another, it impacts life. And there is a two methods of balancing. I think probably uh, Kaushal will cover that more. One is a passive balancing, another is a active balancing. Passive balancing basically means bleed one module with higher voltage through a resistor, so that some current flows into the next module. Active balancing stop charging a module of higher voltage and instead charge the other module with lower voltage. and then BMS has to worry all the time about temperature. A very important component of electrical design, as high currents are involved, a conductor is not a zero voltage drop, that is the point that I am making. Smallest resistance difference between two electrical path may result into differential voltage drops, current will flow from one rather than uh, or another rather than the other creating imbalances. So, lot of imbalancing take place because electrical design is poor. Hmm? In fact, a very interesting thing that I had come across, there are let us say there is a metal plate to which all the cells are connected. This is then connected in series to another metal plate, where four more cells are connected. And these two metal plates can even be same, does not matter. You will think you have done it right you have a thick metal plate to which you have connected. But look at the, this 
path from here to here is shorter path as opposed to from here to here. Shorter path will have a smaller resistance, longer path will have a longer resistance. Because there is only single connection between these two, you have a problem. So, the way to correct is that you will have multiple connections. You cannot have a single connection, then more or less same amount of current will flow. Oh, same thing I am showing here. Okay. If a current enters here and supposed to be going here, yeah, if the current same thing current is entering. If it goes through A, it encounters less resistance. If it goes to D, if your let us say inlet comes from one side, inlet also has to come from a way by which all four gets equal. Uh, and this is the kind of problem that you will get into. It happens more between modules as current from one cell and model to another is more as compared to from one other cell or more cell. A continuous imbalance deteriorates capacity. Some of that can be corrected, but a continuous imbalance can deteriorate capacity. So, electrical design has to be carefully done. I want to point out two more things and stop here. What if there are failures? What kind of failures happen? Suppose you have modules m p n cells in parallel m in series and one of the n parallel cells become open circuit. If it is open circuit, suppose there are four of them, now only three cells are in parallel, one of them is not there. Okay? So, suddenly this is happening only in one module other modules have full capacity, but this one module capacity has gone by 3 by 4 of the original one. Overall pack capacity will go down by 3 by 4, because when the current flows, uh, the current if you try to flow more, if all of them are getting charged by 1 by 1 c, this will start getting charged by 1.33 c, that will destroy the pack. The back completely. Overall capacity itself goes down, because hmm, though other cells have capacity, capacity will not be utilized. Hmm. So, open circuit basically immediately means in any model, one cell, one cell is all that for us to do. Suppose there is a short circuit, one of the n parallel cells, all the cells in parallel will get short circuit. So, you, your serial voltage will go down by 3.7 volt, which basically means the voltage has gone down, your motor etcetera everything has been designed to operate at a certain voltage, now you they will get differential voltage. But still short circuit is better than open circuit, open circuit hurts you much more. So, drive train will get poor performance, but one can do that and these are to be monitored. The BMS has to monitor if anything like this has happened. Now, replacement will involve taking out the module and these are all modules which are welded together, very difficult to take out the modules. So, replacement of module may be sometime possible replacement of cell is not possible. Now, when you do the design itself, you have to worry about what will I do if I have to replace, how difficult will it be. Hmm? You cannot think about it later on. So, in the design time you can sort of say these things I will only connect through screws, hmm? so that they can be taken out. I will connect even 
even the uh, bus bar that I will connect, I will connect through screws. So, I can open up the bus bar and take this out. If a serial connection between module fails, battery fails, it does not go through, but it is generally easier to repair. Hmm? May require some bus bar replacement. What happens if a BMS fails? That is uh, more easy to detect and it does fail. BMS fails more often, but easy just to replace BMS, hmm? recalibrate everything. You have to worry about again SOC and all those kind of things. But the other problem that you often find that you know you have to switch in current, switch off current, and for that you use MOSFETs. And MOSFET is a heat dissipating device. If a MOSFET is getting and you are supposed to remove that heat, if a MOSFET is getting overheated, you will see the temperature. It is a design issue. If one MOSFET is getting heated compared to the others, you have to worry about it. You have to shut down that MOSFET, otherwise the MOSFET is likely to fail. Temperature sensor failure, there are lots of temperature sensor. Every module temperature is going to be sensed every he, uh, MOSFET temperature is going to sense. And you find sometime these uh, temperature sensors are not well, uh, not very good quality, in which case they will give you all kinds of results and you will land up doing something totally different from what you are supposed to do. Sometime the sensor will fail, sometime sensor will give you wrong temperature and you have to detect it. Otherwise, these are dangerous because it can result into meltdown. Huh? You think that there is nothing wrong in the sensor, but it is getting heated up. It is one of the most risky thing. Cell capacity de deterioration, that is another thing that happens and largely it is unbalanced cells in modules. Battery pack capacity deteriorates. Incorrect SOC and SOH estimation. One of the important thing we had a battery with incorrect, and the drivers will complain, saying, "Sir, it was showing 40 percent SOC," and suddenly my vehicle got cut off. For a long time, we thought something was wrong in vehicle. Something was wrong in display. Actually, we found out later on it was SOC, SOH estimation mistake. Hmm? It can result into a problem. So, to sum up, we have looked at a conceptual design of a battery pack so far. Not so carefully at what will be the mechanical design which will stop the bulging, the pressure, how will vibration be tackled not at thermal design, we have basically done electrical design and we have not done the BMS design. This is what Dr. Kaushal will actually do in his set of lectures, get into a depth of each of these things. This is what a battery pack design will be. The simple configuration of putting them in series and parallel is fairly easy, everybody can do it. Electrical design is somewhat tough but because you do not understand 200 amperes. Hmm? If it was 1 ampere, the problem would not be so serious. A milli ohm resistance will only give you a milli volt difference. So, electrical design we dealt with minimally, he may deal a little bit, but more carefully as mechanical, thermal and BMS design we will look at. Cell selection itself is critical in price and performance. Cost issue will be actually looked at very carefully in the next section. Cell performance in life cycles and impact of charging discharging rate, operation temperature, depth of discharge, all of these will have impact on life cycles, all of this will have impact on cells. That is the next section we will look at what is the battery cost, usage cost that I have been talking about right from there. The pack design also impacts the battery life. 
cell imbalance has highest impact on battery life. Pressure on cells, vibration, cell temperature differences, differential currents impact life cycles of the battery. Inaccurate determination of SOC and SOH of course, hurts the vehicle performance after some time starts hurting the battery performance. So, this is what we have to, to summarize this and what we will do next is there are some questions fairly simple questions. I will not go through the questions well. Let me quickly look at it. A uh, battery pack of 115 kilowatt hour with a nominal voltage of 350 volt. You cells are 3.65 14 h. Configure what will the battery voltage at 0 percent and 100 percent. Need a 0.5 kilowatt hour battery of 48 volt. What are the cells that I will use? What will be the configuration? A battery pack of 375 volt. 200 ampere hour is to be made to power a luxury car. One battery pack is made with 3.65 volt, 4 h, 21,700 cell, another with prismatic cell. Suggest NPM mesh configuration for each case. Find the total number of cells in each cases. A cell involved module of n parallel cell fails find the resultant nominal pack voltage in V and ampere hour for both the packs. You will find some interesting results. A battery pack of 2 P 14 S is made using 13 A H lithium ion cells to power a two wheeler. The pack is used to feed in the field for some time and has undergone 5 percent degradation. So, S O H is 95 percent. The pack operation is limited between 10 percent to 90 percent SOC. Indicate the SOH percentage of this battery pack and DOD of operation, depth of discharge of operation. I have already given you the answer. What is the nominal voltage of the pack and the capacity in kilowatt hour? What is the usable capacity of the battery pack at different at the current level of SOH? And there are various true and false. Please answer that and you will then come to the next section which I will do next class.